All right, welcome back to Athletic Every Day, day 17. I started out with continuous skips. So usually I have a break between every 100, so I'll do 100 skips, switch the variety, and then do another 100 skips. I wanted to start incorporating a bit more aerobic training into my program, but I don't want to like just specifically do aerobic training, like just going out for a run, just for the sake of running. I want to kind of incorporate it into my routine. Uh, one of the ways that you can overload and... Uh, progressively overload training other than changing the weight or the sets and the reps is just decreasing the amount of rest time that you have in between sets so this applies to practically anything any type of training if you just reduce the amount of rest that you have when you start the next set i can guarantee you you're going to have a bit more of fatigue setting in and therefore as you get fitter as your cardiovascular fitness improves as your aerobic endurance improves and your anaerobic endurance improves as well you'll start to find that um, you can reduce the amount of rest that you need in between sets and still feel the same level of freshness when you start the next set. That is another level of improvement. So I did a barbell complex to warm up today. Don't usually do those uh, unless I'm doing a weightlifting workout, but I felt like I wanted to do uh, you know, a wide variety of movements again. Again, this is still my off week. This is actually the last day of the off week. And tomorrow I'm gonna be starting a brand new program. This is a sprint and jump program. You guys probably hear me harking on about this for the last week or so, how I want to get into sprinting and jumping. But now I am actually going to be finally getting into sprinting and jumping. So this was kind of the last workout where I'd be preparing my body for that. So you'll notice throughout the past week, I've been doing a lot of shallow knee, bend, knee bending exercises, trying to strengthen that quarter squat position, especially unilaterally with exercises like the Peterson step down or Peterson step up or Patrick step, whatever you want to call it. And that is for preparation. I haven't done this for fun. I'm doing it for preparation for the program because in a lot of athletic movements, the position of the leg is more often than not in this quarter squat position. You'll very rarely find someone getting into a very, very deep range of knee flexion in uh, an athletic movement. That's not to say that training for that isn't good. It just means that you should be distributing a bit more of your time to be training in that quarter squat position, strengthening that quarter squat position than other positions. There's obviously great value to be had in squatting all the way to depth, uh, going you know beyond parallel and getting that stretch reflex in the bottom. But that's more of hypertrophy benefit and that's also more of a resiliency benefit. It's kind of protecting an end range of motion by getting stronger in it. When, you're, when your joints and your tendons and your ligaments are at their weakest, when, you're, when they're in their fully stretched position and the most compromised position, if you can be strong there, then you know that you'll be safe in pretty much any position. But that's not optimal position to be training for, to be increasing the most optimal joint angles for power production and for being explosive generally tend to be the, the smaller and the shallower angles of flexion and extension because those angles are the ones you see in sports. You don't see, for example, in uh, sprinting, you don't see that much knee flexion when the foot is in contact with the ground. When the foot is brushing across the ground, when it's striking the ground, you'll find that the leg is almost fully extended and you're relying a lot more on the elasticity of the muscle to produce force rather than the, the, the contractile uh, concentric element of the, of the muscle. So that is part of the reason why I'm doing all of these shorter angle movements, uh, shorter range of motion movements. And then I finished up with a little bit of mobility and some core work. I also did a superset with overhead press and, uh, and pull-ups, uh, two sets of 10 a piece, nothing crazy, just to keep my upper body strength there. And the core component I also did today was the paloff press. Paloff press has got to be one of the most fantastic core exercises. Uh, because it trains isometric anti-rotation and anti-lateral um, flexion. So by holding on to that, that band, the band is trying to pull you one way, but if you just keep pressing in and out, you're basically having an anti-rotation uh, component on your core. So it's a fantastic way to train for overall trunk stability. Then I finished up with two sets of eight Nordic hamstring eccentrics. And that's pretty much it for today. I hope you guys liked it. And please follow along for more so you can see the new program starting tomorrow. I'll catch you in the next one. Hope you guys have a nice day.